guys and welcome back to my channel. Swoop finally came out with her long-awaited interview with Joshua David Evans. Swoop has been making a docu-series expose about Colleen Ballinger. We've talked about her interview with Johnny, one of the alleged victims who came out against Joshua Evans and Corey DeSoto, and how people found some holes in his story, including Swoop herself. Watch our last video for more information on that. But this video, we're going to be looking at the other side of the coin from Joshua David Evans's perspective. Joshua, if you don't know, is Colleen's ex-husband. They got divorced in 2016 and Colleen seemingly moved on pretty quickly. She got married to her co-star, had kids, but behind the scenes, she was going around obsessively talking about Joshua. Johnny had made some grooming allegations against Joshua and Joshua actually ended up apologizing to Johnny like many times, both privately and publicly, I think four times, but Johnny did not have it and it seems like he just wanted to stir the pot. To this day, he has this skewed idea that he was being a mentor. So let's get straight into the recap of Swoop's interview with Joshua David Evans. First off, Joshua himself actually messaged Swoop after Johnny's allegations because he wanted his part of the story to be out there and Swoop asked for the interview. Joshua says that he got a lot of mainstream media channels asking him for an interview, but he rejected all of them and this is actually the first time that he's going to be talking about this. Both Swoop and Joshua acknowledge the fact that Joshua is pretty much the only person who's had allegations made against them who's actually acknowledging anything and taking accountability. Swoop asks what his role was in this entire Colleen drama. Josh answers that he was just a trophy boyfriend at that point, and they always had a relationship with high highs and low lows, but he was always so infatuated by her that he kind of just ignored all of the red flags. He always kind of felt like he was looked at as a replaceable sitcom character in Colleen's life. When they got married, Josh and Colleen's relationship started changing behind the scenes. She would refuse to go to therapy consistently and blamed Joshua for everything. Josh constantly felt disrespected in this relationship. He says Colleen was also just rude to people and he found himself having to apologize for her to people that had worked for her on tour. Swoop asks about the statement that Josh had made about him having been gaslit by Colleen as well. Josh says, Whatever truth I thought was there, she denied that truth and made me feel crazy. Or how she would talk about fans or what she would say about all the gifts that they brought. Swoop asks if Colleen would talk negatively about her fans to him and Joshua replies saying that she would despite claiming that she loved them. She didn't really love them as people. She loved what they provided for her. She mm. loved the attention, she loved the status, mm. she loved, like it gave her a thrill and she loved it, but do I think she truly loves her, like loved her fans? I never really felt like she did. I think she just loved what it gave her. Josh says that he always felt like Colleen looked down on him and always felt like she was the star and that they were her fans. Colleen would go days without talking to Josh when she was filming her show in Canada. And speaking actually of her show, Josh felt like Colleen may have purposely cast Eric, her now husband, because she thought he was attractive, even though his character wasn't even supposed to be conventionally attractive. He's kind of a good looking dude. You want him to play this character that's supposed to be like the, the male Miranda? And I thought, I can't say, I, I can't say anything. She's gonna think I'm jealous. She's gonna think I'm controlling. He also knew a lot of times that he'd be hanging out in her apartment in Canada or that they'd be alone together. There was even an instance where Colleen claimed to have had people over at their house. Josh gets suspicious and goes home only to notice that the place was completely reeking of smoke and alcohol and empty with Colleen just on the bed and get this, playing her ukulele. <laughs> it's ever present. Just the red flags were popping off in my head. Like why, why would you have everyone leave when you knew I was showing up? Unless you didn't want me to be around it. And apparently the last thing that Josh ever said to Colleen was, when you're effing Eric in our bed, I want you to think of me. And I said it right to her face, eyes locked. And her response was, it's not like that, he has a girlfriend. Soon afterwards, Colleen started dating Eric. Months later, Colleen contacted Joshua, threatening to sue if he ever says anything about her. 
And this wasn't even the first time that Colleen had cheated. Apparently, she literally cheated on him within the first three months of them dating. And then it happened again two months later. He was saying, I'm so sorry if I got you in trouble with your boyfriend. I'm so sorry. And she said, please don't apologize. Do not apologize. We can keep doing this as long as my boyfriend doesn't know about it. I have no problem with this. It just breaks my heart so much for Joshua because that's just how manipulated he was by her and possibly just had really low self-esteem that he would stay with someone like that. And poor guy literally thought that it was his fault at the time. I should have known because she showed me who she was so early on. It left a mark that never went away. After their divorce, Joshua got slammed on social media by Colleen's fans harassing him and slandering his name. People were sending him death threats and telling him to go kill himself, and he was actually very worried and scared. Even his sister was freaking getting death threats, and for a time, he was abusing alcohol and became suicidal. There were all these rumors going around about Joshua having cheated and Joshua having done this and that. Everything was just very anti-Joshua. And now we know that these were probably initiated by Colleen herself and literally her just going around DMing her young fans and talking shit about Joshua. Like, what the fuck? Are you 16? But it got to the point that he obsessively would go on these gossip sites reading about himself and his divorce with Colleen. But he denies ever having made an account or pretending to be someone else on these sites. He was just a little lurker. Swoop brings up the undeniable power dynamic inherent in Joshua and Colleen's relationship. She was more powerful in virtually every regard than he ever could have been. Joshua says that he was aware of it from the very beginning of the relationship. His opinions were always disregarded and everyone around them was literally aware of it, but he was just so blinded and in love with love, which just breaks my heart hearing. Joshua also feels like if he had publicly done the things that Colleen did after their divorce and moved on so quickly and married his co-star, that he would have gone destroyed by the internet, which like rightfully so, but the fact that nobody even batted an eye at Colleen felt a little bit sexist to him. My truth didn't matter. What I felt didn't matter because I'm the guy and I can't say this because they'll just attack me more. She's the angel and here I am a villain who just wanted a marriage to work. He lost everything by losing that marriage because it wasn't just Colleen. He also lost her family who he loved so much. And now moving on to what we've all been wondering. Okay, maybe it's just me who's been thinking this. Was there a prenup? They actually didn't have one. Prior to their marriage, Joshua told Colleen that he would never take anything and he just kept his word. But guys, literally days after deciding to divorce, Colleen was just like, okay, I'm gonna go post a video about the divorce. And here he was like still processing his emotions. He asked her to give it some time and she was just like, I'm gonna post it whether you like it or not. Now with Colleen's cancellation, Joshua actually feels bad for her. I feel bad answering this question because I don't want it to come off like I'm on here to like bash her and drag her. Swoop asks if Joshua thinks the way Colleen's being characterized now is accurate, and Josh responds saying this. I think this is the, the truest depiction of her that has ever been seen mm. publicly. Although he did also say that he did truly love her at one point, and she wasn't always this huge monster, and he could see the good in her as well. Joshua talks about an instance during their honeymoon where they had an amazing time and not 24 hours later, she goes on to talk shit about him over text to Shane Dawson. There was, not, there, was no, there was no fight, there was no argument. It was actually a really pleasant honeymoon experience. We didn't have any altercations. We didn't have any anything. I'm very much seeing a pattern here though, like how she would pretend to be BFFs with Trisha Paytas and just say terrible things about her body behind her back. Joshua says that he shouldn't have been surprised because she would talk shit about everyone, like, all the time. Everybody else she had shit to say. That was a common thing that she would all do. All the time. It's like a sport for her. Mm. She's a pro athlete when it comes to that. And this was very common for Colleen. She would make fun of Joshua all the time, belittle him, and say that she was, and say that he was an embarrassment to her, but would, like, mask it all under, like, oh, I'm just kidding. But then he says this. See, I go back and forth from like wanting her to be okay to also fearing her. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid of her. I'm afraid of what she'll nitpick about this. He says he still feels like he's within the bounds of Colleen's control. Moving on, Soup asks if Colleen's ever been physically abusive. Josh says that they really wouldn't have physical altercations, but she would roughhouse with him a little too much and maybe a little bit too aggressively. 
Swoop moves on to Joshua's current wife, Pamela, who, by Joshua's own words, has been a source of strength for their family. Swoop spoke with Pamela for over an hour on the phone, actually, and several days later, Pamela asked Swoop to share this statement. At the core of my heart is a desire for people to have peace and for everyone to live from a place of humanity and kindness. You never really know what a person is going through and the profound effects your words and actions can have on them, their lives, and the people close to them. There's so many things I could say and have wanted to say throughout the years and even recently. I have chosen to keep things close and focus on taking care and protecting my family, our little safe bubble, and our mental health. I love Joshua with all my heart. I am so grateful for and admire how hard he has worked to overcome some very heavy and dark times, choosing not only to live but also to strive for peace and goodness, all while continuing to learn and grow in the midst of it all. My hope and wish for my husband, myself, our family, and everyone involved is for peace, healing, and to be able to close this chapter, move forward, and be good to one another. Okay, now let's move on to Corey DeZoto. Corey is Colleen's best friend, assistant, and quote, soulmate. Corey has lived with Colleen through two marriages now, which is kind of weird, but also kind of cute. Joshua says that he could never feel like that they were married because Corey was just always there all the time. Colleen also called Corey her soulmate on Instagram shortly after they got married, which I mean, it was just hurtful. Swoop then moves on to hold Joshua accountable for the things that he's done. She brings up the inappropriateness of Miranda Sings' content that was catered to like 13 year olds. Josh says that he discovered Colleen when she only had like two to three videos out and a lot of our audience at the time was older college age kids. There's a lot of people in my program who were just just had the, the characteristics of Miranda, the character that Which do. are what, it's cocky? Cocky and just, they talk like this. And just like, they just thought they were so good and they would record themselves singing songs and post it online for everyone to see. And Okay, but like she's already kind of sounding like a mean girl. Josh says that he would sometimes comment on things here and there about the inappropriateness of Miranda's comment at the beginning of their relationship, being like, you sure you want to do that? But it just never went over well. Over time, her audience got younger and younger with Colleen becoming more live stream. Joshua then admits that he started participating in inappropriate Miranda Singh's content because he would benefit from it all as well. It's going to benefit me professionally and financially. I did have a lot of pause and I was a coward and I gave up trying to interject and then I fully embraced it for myself. And slowly he became desensitized to the content. Swoop brings up a video of Colleen and Joshua in a fan's hotel room. None of it's right. None of it's okay. Joshua says that it all felt innocent at the time because he felt like he was just in the background and it was all so normalized. The clip is when Colleen was touring in Europe and she would meet up with fans from the original group chat that she had with them. What I remember from that time was we're going to go and meet them and have lunch. And that was all that was told to me. Obviously, now he regrets it and finds it appalling that he did that, but it was all just so normalized at the time. Swoop brought up how Johnny mentioned these tiny chats in where Colleen and Joshua were active for four to five days a week with fans. Josh says that he wasn't as active as that himself. The fans were always on there and they would tweet Colleen and him to join as well, but he only probably did it like five to ten times. This one time, he said that he made a terrible mistake by joining the chat as Johnny to see what people were saying about him. It's weird and it's gross. And it I mean, I think a lot of people would say it's beyond weird even. Swoop then inserts a clip of not only Joshua doing that, but of Joshua admitting that he and Colleen would watch fans with their cameras off. Sometimes when we're bored, we go on to Tiny Chat and watch uh, our friends chatting with each other without them knowing oh, that we're guys. watching them. We're basically watching you guys. I feel like I should not be watching this. <laughs> what is this? Tiny chatting with people online. Does that make me weird? Maybe. I'm no weirder no. than these guys. Yeah. Joshua admits that again, it was weird, but it felt like the right thing to do at the time to interact with fans and try to build a greater fan base. He says that he would eavesdrop because he wondered whether they actually liked him and his content or just who he was associated with, being Colleen. Swoop addresses the rumors that Joshua had written some random content and he immediately denied it, saying Colleen didn't respect him enough to take his ideas. Swoop then moves on to Becky, someone who Swoop claims is one of Colleen's most front-facing victims. Becky was taken up on stage during a Miranda Sings show to do the yoga challenge in a romper. 
Joshua says that someone should have protected her and he could have been very well one of these people. You're not at fault. It was not your fault. You did not deserve it. You should have never been in that situation. You should have always been protected and you should have always had people to step in and, and oversee and make judgment calls. Joshua then brings up Jojo Siwa. He said that after their divorce, he felt a sudden shift in Jojo's attitude towards him. People were telling him to reach out to her and say that he wants her to be on his side and he was just like, no, I'm not going to do that. Moving on, Joshua apologized for a music video that he made 11 years ago with Colleen and her sister Rachel called Generic Rap Song. Swoop calls it outwardly racist and I think the Durag definitely was, but she may have blown the rest of it a little bit out of proportion, but I guess you can check it out yourselves to decide. And now Johnny Silvestri. Swoop says Johnny lied about his age, doctored evidence, straight up lied about details, and also did the very thing that he accused Joshua of doing to another child. She asks Joshua about Johnny, and Joshua disagrees with Johnny's characterization of him. No, I think he, he takes fragments of truth that are real, and he amplifies them almost identically to how Colleen did the same thing behind the scenes. Joshua admits that there were parallels between his relationship with Johnny and Colleen's relationship with Adam. Johnny ran an account for Joshua just like Adam did for Colleen, but that is pretty much it. That's where the parallel stops. In response to Johnny having said Joshua was, quote, selling him a fantasy and taking him under his wing, Joshua said that he was genuinely rooting for Johnny. Now, as a reminder, John's correspondence with Joshua online began with him directly telling Joshua that he was feeling alone, depressed, and having trouble in school. This is an important context in understanding this story in general. I mean, I, I worried about him. He himself had an older mentor at his church growing up, so it just didn't seem like a wrong thing to do at the time. And so I just thought, what if no one else reaches out to him? What if this is it? And I don't want to sound dramatic, but that's really how I felt. I thought this guy needs somebody at least to say, I, I believe in you. I think you're going to do great things. He also wasn't an influencer at this point, and he still had a full-time job. So he truly felt like it was a youth group thing at the time. He gave Johnny his number on a meet and greet because that's what he thought mentors would do. And while he admits now that it was a mistake, he just felt like it was the right thing to do. Their communications were mainly initiated by Johnny though. Johnny would message him more and more and Joshua wouldn't always respond actually. Johnny had alleged that they had spent time alone, which Swoop thinks was a lie. And Joshua actually confirms saying that every single one of the times that he saw Johnny, which was about six to eight times, other people were around. There was one instance where Johnny's family invited him to dinner and he says that they had a great time and he spoke with his parents and it was amazing. And then there was also another instance where Johnny wanted to hang out during a time Joshua was doing an auto show. Joshua agreed to grab coffee with him during his break for like 15 minutes and that was literally it. Johnny recently characterized that interaction as a quote coffee date. Johnny also claimed that Joshua would personally invite him to shows when he was like 16. To be clear, none of that was true. He was an adult and the invitation John talks about was Joshua promoting a show on Twitter. He would say stuff to me like, oh my God, come to, Califor uh, come to California for my show. And I'd be like, are you serious? And he'd be like, yeah, come on down. And I'd be like, whoa, sick. Johnny also claims that he came out to Joshua the night of that show and Joshua responded saying, that's none of my business. And he also discouraged him from coming out to his parents. Joshua says that that is actually what happened. Leaving out is he also expressed immense fear of what his parents would say or do in reaction. And so being from the South and knowing how people treat and seeing people being treated a certain way, my first response was, if you feel like this is dangerous for you, and if you do it, you might not have a place to sleep at night and you don't know what's gonna happen, maybe you should wait until you're 18. What, he said he was 19? What I recollect is that he was living with them. He was still under that roof. Mm -hmm. Joshua says that he doesn't actually believe that Johnny was hurt in response and is more dishonest. There's also this clip. What's up, Johnny? Happy birthday, man. Today's a big day for you. Happy birthday, man. I believe in you. I'm proud of you. And I cannot wait to see what the future holds. Johnny characterized this as creepy, but then later says that his family had to hound him for it. Like, it was just weird for him to bring it up. Joshua was doing many birthday message videos at the time. To me, it's the most innocent wishing someone a happy birthday. Johnny then claims that Joshua ghosted him, which has been proven to be untrue. Joshua distanced himself from people in the last two months of his marriage, including Johnny, obviously, as well. The next thing he sees is Johnny tweeting in support of Colleen, which hurt him a little bit. Rightfully so. 
I wanted him to make his own decisions. So to me, he made a decision. And then I made a decision, which was, I can't see anything related to her. It hurts mm -hmm. too bad. So I removed anything that had any type of connection to her. Mm -hmm. My life crashed and burned. And he's mad that I wasn't like hitting him up. Joshua apologized to Johnny multiple times because at the end of the day, he was the adult and he should have established some boundaries. Swoop asks why Joshua apologized in the way that he did. He answers saying that whatever role he played in Johnny hurting, he's sorry for it. It was never my intent to swoop him in and then take him on this ride that led him to then be mistreated by Colleen and Corey on tour after the fact. Like I. There was, there was no ill will. I never had ill will towards him. Meanwhile, Johnny has been embellishing stories, saying hurtful things to and about Joshua and just having general disregard for his feelings. Everything out of his mouth seems opportunistic and it seems if there's a way for him to take something about me and amplify it and make it even worse and to bring attention to every single thing I do and damn everything that I say or do and make it about him, then he's a, that's where he wants to be right now and he wants to be man to man, I don't think he understands what that means because a man doesn't do what he does. Finally, Swoop asks if he has forgiven Colleen. No. Feel terrible, say? You don't have to feel terrible for saying what you feel. She's never shown me remorse. It, I, I don't forgive her, but I also do my darndest not to the, not even let her cross my mind. I don't want to think about her. The reaction to this interview are overwhelmingly positive towards Joshua. One user said, I understand Josh did some messed up things, but how Colleen treated him was awful. I'm horrified. Another user said, this is the most sincere apology and taking of accountability that I've ever seen on YouTube. There was no victim blaming, no I'm sorry but, no pussyfooting around. Josh was in depth, explained how he came to where he was wrong and genuinely owning up to his actions. It's not easy to talk about, let alone open up to the level that he did. I commend you, Josh, for standing with you. But okay guys, that was it for this video. If you have three, four hours to spare, I do recommend watching the full interview with Swoop. It just gives so much more context and I think Josh did amazing. He's just such an emotional and well-spoken person. I really enjoyed watching it myself. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I post new videos every single week. All right, bye-bye.